Last Night on Earth is the zombie survival game from thematic publisher Flying Frog Productions. So Last Night on Earth recreates a classic zombie horror movie, with players either taking on the role of plucky human heroes or faceless hordes of zombies. It accommodates two to six players, plays out in one to three hours, and it has four expansions, all of which give you some extra scenarios, extra cards, and extra miniatures. So Last Night on Earth is a scenario-based game, and each scenario has a very different feel, from a desperate race to escape town, to a showdown in an abandoned manor. Each scenario is going to give you a set round limit, as well as winning conditions for both the human and zombie side. So after choosing which one or two players are going to be playing the zombies, we set up the board. So in the center of the board is the town center, and then around it are randomized L-shaped boards. Then the hero characters all choose their character sheets, they get their starting equipment, and they place their miniature on the board in the assigned space. Next, the zombie and hero decks are placed face down next to the board, and the starting zombies show up. These are drawn from a pool of miniatures that's divided by color if you've got two zombie players. Now, the number of zombies is determined by a die roll, and they're going to be evenly distributed among the spawning pits on the board, which are marked with red X's. So each round of Last Night on Earth has a zombie turn and a human turn. On the zombie turn, the zombie player moves the sun tracker up one mark, and then they draw up to their combined hand limit of four. Then they roll to see if any new zombies are going to be spawning that round, and then they move their zombies. So zombies can move one space in any direction, and they can go through walls. However, their zombie hunger forces them to move towards adjacent heroes, and it prevents them from leaving a space that's got a hero in it. Now after the zombies have moved, any hero that finds themselves in a space with one or more of them is going to have to fight. So combat in Last Night on Earth is pretty simple. All of the zombies in a square are going to be divided evenly among all the heroes in a square, and all of the combat is resolved through six-sided dice rolls. So heroes get two dice and they pick their best result, and zombies get one. If the hero beats the zombie, then the zombie is successfully fought off. Now if they roll doubles, then the zombie takes a wound or is killed. If the zombie wins, then the hero takes a wound. And if a hero takes too many wounds, then they die. Players can use items and other cards to give them a bonus during combat. Humans can use as many as they need, while the more mindless zombies only get one card a fight. Now after combat's over, any newly spawned zombies are going to appear on the board, and it's the human's turn. So during their turn, the heroes act one at a time. They can move, exchange items, fire a ranged weapon, or fight the zombies. Now on a move action, a hero can either roll a six-sided dice and move that many spaces, or they can use their move to search an area that they're in, and that gets them a hero card. A hero can exchange items with another hero on their space. Items are kept face up next to your character sheet, and there's a limit of four. Of these, only two can be weapons. Now, if you've got a ranged weapon, then on your turn you can make a ranged attack to take out one zombie in your line of sight. Any heroes that end up finishing their move in a space with one or more zombies are once again going to have to fight. Both heroes and zombies can play event cards during their turn to give themselves some extra benefits. Also, heroes have special abilities, which you'll see on their character sheet, and some of the more advanced scenarios have some different rules, like rules for explosives and rules for turning dead heroes into zombies. So what Last Night on Earth does best is really recreate the feel of a zombie movie. From the art on the game to the gameplay to the soundtrack that comes with it, it's got a super immersive theme. Like zombie movies, it does occasionally wander into more mature themes as well, so you may not want to be busting this one out with the kids. Another thing that makes it more of an immersive experience-based game is that the rules are really simple, so your players aren't going to get particularly bogged down in the mechanics of the game, it's really going to be more about experiencing all of the events. Now unfortunately, the simplicity means that a lot of the game comes down to luck. You're drawing cards, you're rolling dice, and those are going to determine the outcome of most things that happen. So if you're the kind of player that really likes complex tactics or executing big plans, this may be a little less interesting to you. So another negative to this game is it can drag a little bit. It's a bit slow to start, it's going to take a little bit for you to get to the point where you feel like you've got a lot to do and it's getting exciting and it's feeling like the climax of the movie. A good pro, however, is the zombies are played by another player, rather than controlled by a mechanic in the game or an AI. So that means that the heroes are fighting against a much more interesting opponent. Makes it pretty cool. Also, 
Another pro is this is a scenario-based game. So that means every time you come back to the game, you could be playing something entirely different, which makes the replay value really great. And some of the more advanced scenarios are really, really interesting. 